games provide uh, a, an interesting context for, for modeling. There's certainly a lot of process modeling within the idea of a game. So one of my favorite games is actually from, uh, oh gosh, it must be like 40 years ago. And it is called Zork, the Great Underground Empire. And the idea behind this game is it's predicated on a model that you could call a lot of different things that I think people probably would typically call it a map. It's a game map, and it's a map of the modeling space. So the way this works is you've got a bunch of you know circles and rectangles and so on. Put yourself in, in one in a particular start area, and then depending on what you do, the action taken by the, the game player, uh, you may go north, south, east, west, you know, indeed, you may pick something up, you may drop something, and so there are these kind of events that create a, a change. You go from one box to another. Now, um, I had mentioned earlier in the design, UX design area, there's this thing called a flow diagram, user flow. Well, the flow diagram, the Zork 1 map, and finite state machine essentially are all the same thing. Um, so from a, from a high abstract level, we would say they're all finite state machines because they represent states, transitions, and that's it. States, using one transition, you go from one state to another state. So you can think of this, the finite state machine as kind of being a, a unifying abstraction that links games, UX design um, and, and and other things together, but uh, you know your your game player is probably going to be familiar with this sort of thing. At least the idea of having a map. So this idea of finite state machine is actually encoded within a game engine Unity, which is probably one of the main gaming software platforms out there. You can create scenes, you can create animations, and you can create interactive games within the Unity package. Uh, and there's something that Unity comes with, something called Mechanim. And Mechanim is essentially a, a finite state machine for a purpose of describing uh, not completely unlike the Zork map, but in a slightly more general way how um, an agent, how a character, how a non-player character in particular walks and runs. I mean, you as the user may be, you have an avatar, you have your own character and you know, you know you're going to move using your joystick or using a mouse or a keyboard. Um, but then the question is, well, how, what are the, what's the model of um, you know, the non-player characters in the game? And so this is an example using Mechanim of describing non-player character movement. It is a model of, of, of movement for that character. Now there's also numerous plugins for Unity. Unity is very plugin friendly. And in fact, um, ma many plugins will cost money. Some are free, some cost money. But this is also another finite state machine example, but using a different sort of uh, a different plugin using Playmaker. But the idea is the same. Now, not to be outdone, there's Unreal, which is uh, a very powerful game engine that many companies use, and Unreal has come up with a visual representation, a visual model for doing things similar to Unity and, and similar in spirit to, to what was done 40 years ago with uh, adventure games like Zork.